This is Madao Monogatari, a first-person dungeon crawler series that hasn't had an entry in over 20 years. And this is Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, a spin-off puzzle game based on the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog television show, and both are in the same series. So how did we get here? Well, Madao Monogatari has a spin-off that has overtaken and far outlived it, Poyo Poyo, developed by Compile, a falling block puzzle game that lives on to this day. Nowadays, these games just come over as is, but Cute Anime Girls isn't gonna fly in 1993. Wouldn't want people thinking it was a girl game. So the first Poyo Poyo game received a lot of changes as it moved west. The first console release of the series was on the Genesis, which got a conversion for the Super Nintendo as Super Poyo Poyo, and both Sega and Nintendo would further convert these for their American audiences. Nintendo turning it into Kirby's Avalanche, while well, Sega went with Sonic, obviously, making Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Further, the Game Gear port of Poyo Poyo would also get this same treatment, an 8-bit version of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which was available on the Master System and Game Gear. The Genesis version has seen endless re-releases. I mean, it, it's a Genesis game, they never stopped porting them. The Genesis version was part of a collection on the Genesis called Sonic Classics, it was on the PC with Sega Puzzle Pack in the 90s, a Japanese-only PC collection called Sega Archives from USA Volume 2, Two, Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube, as well as Mega Collection Plus on the Xbox and PS2, multiple plug-in plays, the Wii Virtual Console, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection on the Xbox 360 and PS3, the PC Collection, Sega Mega Drive Collection Volume 4 and Gold Edition, Sega Genesis Classics on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, the Sega Genesis Mini, via Nintendo Switch Online's Genesis Online Collection, and a release on Steam. A short version of that is that this game is available on basically everything and extremely easy to find. The 8-bit version is a little less common, since it's released on the Game Gear and Master System, only resurfacing as an unlockable in Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, only on the GameCube version, Sonic Mega Collection Plus, a singular plug-and-play, and on the 3DS Virtual Console for whatever reason. For this video, I played the Genesis version on the Sega Genesis Classics Collection on Switch, so let's actually get started on this bad boy. Poyo Poyo, aka Mean Bean Machine, aka Kirby's Avalanche, are extremely simple falling block puzzle games, but have two unique twists, multiplayer and gravity. Unlike Tetris or Dr. Mario, which are largely high score based affairs, Poyo is based around always being competitive. In its main mode, the scenario mode, the player is always pitted against an AI opponent. The goal is to draw your opponent out, filling their screen so they can't progress further. Creating large chains and combos tosses junk Poyos to your opponent after they place their next piece, which clog up the screen and can only be destroyed by making chains next to them. As for gravity, unlike Tetris, or even more fittingly Dr. Mario, whose pills are 2x1 like Poyos, the two Poyos that fall from the top of the screen are independent from each other, and when placed, will fall apart from each other. This also applies when lower pieces are removed, causing all Poyos above to fall, which leads into combos to create more junk Poyos for your opponents. The key to the game is to create ladders in some way, to organize your Poyos in a way that when you finally connect four more to destroy the first set, the ones above them start going off too, burying your opponent deeper and deeper. I don't know if there's a more satisfying puzzle game mechanic, setting up and executing a large combo as everything slowly goes with the pitch of the junk Poyos rising in celebration with each, genuinely fantastic. Beyond that, the game is just a really simple, fun puzzle game. There's not much more to say mechanically. This first game especially is just a race to get a good combo or chain first, as comeback mechanics hadn't been introduced to the series yet. The primary mode, Scenario Mode, is a series of 13 opponents. In Mean Bean Machine, these are all Robotnik's minions from the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, with Robotnik as the final boss. Before he readopted the Eggman mantle in the West, who's called Robotnik here, presumably Eggman wasn't considered intimidating enough, but the canon would eventually come to see Robotnik as his last name. It's worth noting that the game has multiple speeds too. The longer a match goes on, the faster blocks fall until they become near uncontrollable, and the later levels have higher and higher default speeds. Outside of Scenario Mode, the game has a regular versus mode, an exercise mode, a more traditional puzzle game mode focused on solo play and going for high scores. There's no junk Poyos, but if you end up getting in a bad spot, the game can occasionally send some help in the form of power-ups. Has been, which is the mascot of Poyo Poyo, whose name is Carbuncle, but they renamed them to a shitty pun for this version, uh, just like they renamed Puyo's beans for some reason. Carbuncle changes random beans to a different color, which can potentially give you some combos, and big Poyos can be dropped, which clear two columns entirely to give a bit of space. So it's a pretty simple mode, that's kind of the gist of it. Same thing, solo, power-ups. To talk about the visuals, uh... I don't know how controversial this is, but the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog style has never really appealed to me. I really do not like the character designs, and the redesigns of the Poyos are absolutely horrific. Poyos have a cute simplicity to them, while the beans are 
disgusting pig blobs and completely off-putting, especially the one with the mustache. I'm not sure why they decided to go with the adventures designs for the game. I can only imagine that it was perhaps the need to fill 13 character slots in a game series with very few, or maybe just simple cross-promotion. That said, the sprite work is good and accurate to the show, especially the brief larger cutscene before the game's intro and uh, right before you fight Robotnik, but the character portraits are also very nice, well animated and drawn, working from bad designs though. In game, there's really not a lot to look at. The poise are cute, Carbuncle is cute, but it's just plain backgrounds and Puyos. It looks good for what it is, but it's really nothing flashy as you'd expect. Most of the music in Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is carried directly from Puyo Puyo. The soundtrack is extremely small, but undeniably great, especially the simple tune that plays over the actual gameplay, which speeds up alongside the game. The credits theme is also really nice. Genuinely, there's not a lot to say about the game in the area. It's serviceable to good, and that's all it really needs to be. Game might be impossible if you're colorblind, though. Also kind of an odd note, I'm fairly certain that this is the only Sonic spin-off to never mention Sonic. He never appears on screen, Robotnik is obsessed with beans, and according to the wiki, you play as Carbuncle's cousin has been or something. I mean, it's just Carbuncle, but just, just an odd note. I decided it would be pertinent to watch at least a little of the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. It was not. The show hardly relates to the game, as you might imagine, given it focuses on Sonic, who is entirely absent from the game. I watched uh, two episodes, the first episode and some random one, and honestly it's not awful. The animation can be pretty shoddy, but Urkel's a fine Sonic that kind of weirdly ended up influencing most of Sonic's later portrayals, which is kind of funny. The show's a generic kitty cartoon, it's serviceable but nothing special. The antagonists from the show are bosses in the game, but they're not really portrayed as the goobers they are in the show. They're played to be more intimidating, which is kind of a weird difference. The highlight of the show is definitely the Sonic Says PSAs. Not so much for their own content, but kind of the weird memeable potential, like Tails smoking a cigarette and the Stranger Danger one. At this point, the show is probably best remembered for the fucking YouTube poops, which is better than nothing, I guess. Most shows of this caliber are forgotten and buried. At least this has some kind of legacy. Is Mean Bean Machine a good adaptation of the show? No, it, it barely is. The aesthetic is borrowed because they needed characters to fill a roster, but it bears no actual resemblance to their characterization, and that's as much as I'm willing to dig into this show. It's a show that is very targeted to the Saturday morning cartoon demographic and does that well enough. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is an odd beast. I really think Puyo Puyo would have been okay as it was. I know anime wasn't huge in America at the time, but it seems like a lot of effort to de girly it as it were. That said, the conversion probably facilitated Puyo's existence in the West in a lot of ways. Puyo was always going to live on in Japan, and for a long time, that's all it was, but Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine and its ties to Sonic let it keep coming back to an extensive Western Puyo drought. Mega Collection plug and plays, which kept the series alive at least, alive enough for new generations to become addicted to its amazing gameplay. It's also worth noting that part of the reason the game keeps coming back, while its distant relative Kirby's Avalanche doesn't, is that since Compile's collapse in the early 2000s, Sega now owns Puyo Puyo, meaning there's no hoops to jump through in the re-release process, although I highly doubt Mean Bean Machine is a part of that decision. While Mean Bean Machine is an odd novelty nowadays, it's well recognized enough that Sonic Mania's fourth boss is literally just Mean Bean Machine. This silly game is as much a part of Sonic's history as it is Puyo's now. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, and by extension, Puyo Puyo 1 and Kirby's Avalanche are great. It's a mesmerizing puzzle game that's got great mechanics. It lacks the comeback mechanics of later games, which makes it a little less exciting and a little more clunky, but for my money, this is the best puzzle franchise, even in this primitive version. So let's talk about the even more primitive version. <laughs> Like a lot of Genesis games, Puyo Puyo would get a version for Sega's handheld, the Game Gear, which would then be ported to their 8-bit home console. The at the time, on its last legs everywhere but Brazil, Master System. This version, of course, got its own conversion to Mean Bean Machine, complete with reworked graphics and story. In the gameplay department, nothing has changed. It, it is Puyo, and that's all it needs to be. The primary mode remains unchanged, fight Robotnik's minions, then him. 
The short text cutscenes have been dropped for a static menu that resembles the Mega Man stage selection, and the game feels a little slower at low levels, but it basically pans out to be nearly identical in most regards. Exhibition mode, likewise, is basically identical, and it even includes a multiplayer mode just like the Genesis version, although the handheld version obviously requires two game gears. Unique to this version is the puzzle mode, a great little supplement framed as a training course for Robotnik's bots to learn how to operate the titular bean machine. The players put into boards that are already filled with Puyos and tasked with doing something, clearing all of one color, getting a combo of a certain length, and so on. They're fun little brain teasers that not only serve as a bonus mode to mess with, but help tutorialize ladder setups and things like that for more advanced players. Some of them can be a bit bullshitty, especially towards the end, requiring specific pieces to come out in a nice order to complete, but they're really satisfying to work through and actually serve as a puzzle game in this quote-unquote puzzle game because the puzzle game genre is weird. A lot of the later ones are pretty tedious, if not outright luck dependent, but I think it's enough of a reason to try this version of Mean Bean Machine, if nothing else. On its aesthetic qualities, the game has obviously taken a large hit. 8-bit systems, especially handhelds, don't come close to the power of the 16-bit successors. The music is much lower quality, and the biggest shame, the really catchy and rhythmic music has been turned into a mediocre mush. The visuals are much simpler, but still hold up pretty well. The base gameplay is basically impossible to hurt with the weaker visuals, the Puyos aren't nearly as animated and they don't have the great impact sounds, but they serve their purpose as well. Similar are the characters and portraits. They can't be nearly as detailed or colorful, but still look pretty spot on. The game includes the simple cutscenes from the Genesis version in a more limited palette as well. Unlike the Genesis version, which sees constant re-releases, Mean Bean Machine's 8-bit version is something of a forgotten oddity. The Master System never caught on like the NES did in most regions, I know it was a little more popular in Europe and still lives on in Brazil, but talking about real countries here. <laughs> And the Game Gear has kind of been buried with time, a weird handheld full of bad conversions of good Genesis games that choose batteries like nothing else. Limited re-releases have left it behind unlike its largely superior Genesis version. It's still an okay version of the game, it's Puyo, no matter how bad it looks, it's gonna be fun. The music downgrade hurts more than any visual downgrade, but it does have one saving grace, which is the puzzle mode. Like I said before, it's worth playing through this if you love Puyo, even if it isn't the better version in most ways. So a bit after recording, I realized that the Japanese Genesis Online has Puyo Puyo 1 a bit late, but I got there, so this section might conflict slightly with some of the stuff I've said in other sections. As I mentioned before, Puyo Puyo is a spin-off of Madao Monogatari, hardly relevant, but it's also on basically everything as you may have caught on to. Originally an arcade game which came to America as Puzzle Kids and would later be on the Wii Virtual Console with Online, the first game to do so. Plus on Switch through Sega Ages, which included Puzzle Kids, Puyo Puyo would see tons of other home releases. Super Puyo Puyo on Super Nintendo, which became Kirby's Avalanche, a Game Gear port which became the 8-bit version of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, a PC-98 Japanese computer port which added the puzzle mode from the Game Gear version, and an MSX PC version, which was the original one that had the puzzle mode, I think. A TurboGrafx CD port called Puyo Puyo CD with voice acting, a Game Boy port, a port for the FM Towns, a somewhat obscure Japanese PC, and an unofficial port to the Amiga called Super Foul Egg. And of course, the Genesis port that I played for this video, which is on the Genesis Mini, a Nintendo Switch Online service, beyond being converted to and propagated around by its conversion to Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine in the West. While not the most prolific porting job in the series, even early on the series was a big deal and was starting to get around. Gameplay is virtually the same as the Genesis version of Mean Bean Machine, only differing slightly in scenario mode, which has a beginner training route, consisting of three extremely easy opponents, which also give hints to where to place pieces to help teach the game. It's largely unnecessary, but kind of weird that it got left out of the Western releases. Beyond that, the gameplay is just like Mean Bean Machine, so if you need any uh, catching up, I guess you can go back to that section. But basically, it's still just as good. The biggest changes are in the looks and sounds of the game. I was kind of surprised to see that much of the music isn't shared with Mean Bean Machine, as I'd been led to believe, instead featuring a much more chill soundtrack. Less rhythmic, but very soothing, with hints of intensity. It's a good change, but not a superior change. Both soundtracks are good, just different. 
Visually, the game is obviously much different. The pre-battle cutscenes are much more detailed with crisp animations, including some minor teases at Satan, the final boss, upon clearing the training mode. So basically what I'm trying to say with that is that the story is a little bit more in focus in this one, with the whole Satan build-up and Satan trying to steal Carbuncle. I go more into it in the Sue section, which I wrote after this, they basically all have the same story. Even the intro is visually much better, even if it is very short. It doesn't look as nice as the next game we'll be talking about, but it's still very strong. I think even the animated portraits look a little bit better than in Bean Machine. Basically, Poyo Poyo is a huge hit. I think I pretty well covered my thoughts on it in the first section. It's obvious just from how many ports it got so that it was a huge fucking deal and it served as a great foundation of the series. As for if it's actually worth playing Poyo Poyo, I mean, if you've played Mean Bean Machine, not really. It's the same game in most regards, and unless you speak Japanese, the character interactions won't mean much, even if they do seem more humorous from the animations. The animation is much better and the style is cuter, but that's also stuff that's outside of the gameplay which is basically identical, and it's also in a language you probably don't understand. Poyo Poyo is a fine place to start, but you're probably just gonna want to play Mean Bean Machine, because it's in English. I wasn't initially going to include Super Poyo Poyo Su, as it is technically a sequel, I think the gameplay here is similar enough to make it worthwhile. Most often, Poyo Poyo Su is called Poyo Poyo 2 in America, which kinda misses the joke. Su means expert, but sounds like 2, a naming convention that would follow the series for a long time to come. For example, Poyo Poyo 3 is called Poyo Poyo Sun, which is the Japanese word for 3 and it has a sun motif to it. Poyo Poyo 2, as with its predecessor, began as an arcade game and then got lots of ports. This game was a smash hit in Japan, rivaling Street Fighter 2 in arcades, apparently. This resulted in a lot of fucking ports, most of which avoided international release. The arcade version would be re-released multiple times, on the Wii Virtual Console with online multiplayer only in Japan, on the 3DS for Sega 3D Classics, which did come to America, untranslated, and on the Switch as part of Sega Ages, which also reached America untranslated. Meanwhile, various other versions would pop up, an arcade perfect Genesis port, which was remade in Poyo Poyo Box, a Poyo remake collection on the PlayStation, on the Wii's Virtual Console, even in the West, untranslated, and the Genesis Mini. There was also a TurboGrafx CD port, Poyo Poyo Su, which had voice acting, a Game Boy version, a Game Gear version, a Saturn version, which added in some new modes like practice, a PlayStation port, Poyo Poyo Su Kiteban, which includes the Saturn's changes as well as changes to practice mode, a Windows 95 version, a Wonder Swan version, a Neo Geo Pocket Color port, which actually came to America as Poyo Pop, which makes that the first time that Poyo Poyo 2 was available in America, as well as a later G GBA version based off Poyo Pop, which was also called Poyo Pop. A PS2 version called Poyo Poyo Su Perfect Set, which is an enhanced version of the PS1 version. And finally, and most importantly for this video, two Super Nintendo ports, Super Poyo Poyo Su and Super Poyo Poyo Su Remix, which added an expert mode and practice courses. The first of which has also reappeared on Nintendo Switch Online service in all regions, which is how I played it. If you don't get the point of all this, what I'm trying to say is that Poyo Poyo Su was a very very big deal in Japan, so let's talk about Super Poyo Poyo Su on the Super Nintendo, on the Switch, online. <laughs> so with all that out of the way, what's changed? Not much, and also a lot. The basic gameplay hasn't changed for the most part. Match Puyos, get combos. It's the real changes that make Sue special. We finally got comeback mechanics. The Sue rule set changes were so impactful that to this day, every release in the franchise still uses the Sue rule sets in it, or at least some variants of them, even up to Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, which only released a few years ago. The primary change is offset. As Junk Puyo build above you from your opponent's combos, you have the opportunity to use your own combos to not only reduce the amount being sent your way, but also override it completely to send Junk Puyo to your opponent. This combined with lower Junk Puyo's generated makes the game much more of a back and forth. No longer a race to a large chain, but more focused on board setup, careful timing on setting it off to bury opponents, and quick response to keep from getting buried. Sue also makes a change so that as the match goes on, more and more junk Puyo are generated, keeping things from hitting a stalemate on top of increasing fall speeds of Puyos. 
There's a few more minor changes, but these are the two big ones. Needless to say, it's the same great game, just balanced better. It's fantastic. Super Puyo Puyo Su specifically has a few changes from the other versions, namely that it has a 4-player multiplayer mode through the use of the Super Nintendo Multitap, as well as more practice courses and an expert difficulty. As far as modes go, they're the same as the first games, although the scenario mode operates slightly differently. As opposed to the linear progress of the first, the game is structured in floors. Each floor has its own set of opponents, each having progressively less, more difficult opponents. Floor 1 has 8 opponents, Floor 2 has 6, 3 has 5, 4 has 4, 5 has 2, and 6 has 3 opponents that are fought in a fixed order. On every floor except 6, the player fights them by roulette to decide the order until they reach a high enough score to reach the next floor. Failing to reach a high enough score on each floor, with the exception of the final, after defeating all the opponents, results in an extra fight which will probably push the player above the score threshold if they need. It doesn't change much as far as the game goes, but better players are rewarded by moving in faster by virtue of getting higher scores. This mode also ties in something of a story. Between fights, characters will have a brief interaction, which mostly from the animations seem to be just goofy jokes, up until the end, where the hero Arl fights Satan on top of his tower, who's obsessed with stealing series mascot Carbuncle from her, as well as dating her, which concludes in his castle becoming a rocket and flying into space. The scenario mode here is genuinely much better than the original game's version, just beyond the better rule set of Sue in general, the structure gives worse players more time to learn against easier opponents while benefiting the better players who want to cut through the early game. As for visuals, I mean, it's Puyo. In the game, it looks basically the same as it did in Puyo Puyo 1, Dr. Robotnik. Uh, it's a touch cleaner, but not mind-blowingly so. Where the game does shine is everywhere else. I can't speak for Puyo 1's cutscenes, but the animations for the interactions are really cute, with each opponent having some little thing, like the zombie losing an eye in a cute, fat, chibi style. It's very clean, crisp, and while it doesn't affect the gameplay, even not being able to read the text, I understood what was going on just by the context of the animations. The intro and outro cutscenes, while brief, are also very well animated. Music is also great. It's not as catchy as Mean Bean Machines, and it's hard to say any music really perfectly fits the abstract world of stacking blocks, but it's nice enough to listen to throughout the game. It doesn't get grating, and um, it's nice. It's nice. So obviously, Puyo Puyo Su had a huge impact in Japan. It's on fucking everything. I probably missed a port or two somewhere. That said, its bigger impacts go much further. Su defined how the series of play going on. Puyo Puyo, Mean Bean Machine, and Avalanche were foundational. Su is the real shit. The game that made Puyo what it is. Perfecting the gameplay and ensuring the series would continue for ages. While Su probably isn't the best game in the series anymore, every game in the series is, in effect, a variation of Su. The gimmick may change, the art style may change, but it all comes back to Su. Puyo Puyo Su is fucking great and you should play it. It really doesn't matter how you play it. Mean Bean Machine, Puyo 1, Kirby's Avalanche, whatever are pretty good games, but if you only play one thing I've talked about here, definitely make it Su. It's Puyo perfected and I really have nothing more to say about it. Puyo Puyo is the best puzzle franchise and Su is where the transition from good to fantastic happens. You don't have to be too picky about Puyo Puyo, like Sue is a good place to start, but so would be pretty much any of them, they all kind of play the same, but yeah, um, Puyo Puyo Sue is cool.